previously. Switch! It was an explosive tag team challenge. No! Take him off! Okay, if you yell at me one more time. And when tempers flared... Next time you guys go party, please do not invite me. It was Tommy who bid a flamboyant farewell. Love you, Tommy! Tonight... Teach you in a woman's altar, follow my teacher in a Jewish altar. Yes, yes. The top six take over one of LA's finest restaurants. I apologize for the wait. Tension simmer. How long, please? Maybe, uh... Just one, give me a time! We're in a pressure cooker, times thousands. Pushing Gordon Ramsay... Come on, guys! ...to his boiling point. You three, come in! He is the scariest man in the entire world. All I want is sea bass for venison! Final six home cooks are in downtown Los Angeles, where tonight their culinary skills will be tested, running the legendary Japanese fusion restaurant, Chaya. Oh my goodness. Welcome, guys. Come on, line up. I am just nervous, excited. My goal is to ultimately open up a Mexican restaurant. So this is my opportunity to really feel out whether this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. Welcome, everybody, to Chaya. Now, this is one of the finest restaurants in downtown Los Angeles. This place is historic, iconic, and the setting for the MasterChef restaurant takeover. Restaurant takeover does one of two things. It either beats the dream of being a chef right out of you, or it turns you into a chef in about 90 minutes. Stephen and Derek, since you both were on the winning team in the party platter challenge, you will both be captains tonight. Please, come up here. This is perfect. I have this burning desire to beat him. And what better setting than a restaurant takeover? This is where we get to duke it out. Stephen, because you've been on the winning side of the most team challenges, you get to pick first. This person is extremely strong in the kitchen, and most importantly, I've worked with this person before, Mr. Nick Knapp. Wow. I feel good being number one pick. It's time that I'm being recognized as a threat in this competition. Uh, Derek. This person, without a doubt, is first pick in my book. Drum roll, please. Oh. Katrina. Katrina, wow. Smart, Derek. Stephen, you picked both teams now. This is kind of a no-brainer here. We're in a Japanese restaurant that potentially has some meat and fish in it, right? I'm going to choose Claudia. Claudia, welcome to the red team. Thank you. Great. A vegetarian on my team in one of the most important team challenges I will ever be in. But hey, America loves the underdog. This is the moment where you prove to us that you have what it takes to win this competition. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Allow me to introduce you to the most amazing chef, the executive chef of this restaurant. Chef Tashibe was the first in the world to create tuna tartare. Right here, in this restaurant. Wow. We're getting a demo from the executive chef that invented tuna tartare. Who hasn't had tuna tartare besides Hethel? For service tonight, our six home cooks will make two appetizers, this restaurant's world-famous tuna tartare and a Wagyu beef risotto. Then, two entrees, a seared venison loin with a chestnut puree and mushrooms, and a miso sea bass with Japanese eggplant, bok choy, and a rice cake. First dish up this evening is the chef's tuna tartare. Watch carefully, guys, yes? Mayonnaise and mustard, yogurt. The tuna, guys, is cut to order. What's the most important thing about the dice? It's all the same, All uniform. the same, exactly that. Precision. These dishes, they're complex, but very simple at the same time. Grilled bread and a little slice of lemon. Next, you're going to make the second appetizer, the risotto with Wagyu beef. Today, I use a portobello mushroom, eringi mushroom, and the shimeji mushroom. Okay, and the rice. Watching the demo from Chef Toshibe, I am thinking this is all about the timing. 30 seconds before that risotto is finished, communicating whoever's cooking the beef, beef on. So the beef doesn't go on to the last minute. Lovely. Beautiful. First main course, sea bass, yeah, please. Yeah? Sea bass. 
very easy to burn. So, Chef, the secret is not to get the pan too hot, yep, otherwise it's going to get hot. black. Yep. Watching the chef is like watching a master. Sauce is dashi and wasabi. Beautiful. OK, venison next. It's got a crust of peppercorns on there, salt. Then make it some frambe, OK? Yeah. OK! Every movement is exact and precise. And now I got to come and walk in his footsteps? Oh, my god, this is almost impossible. There is one final small piece to this puzzle tonight. You've got an expediter tonight. This guy's done this a few times. Anybody got any guesses who that is? You. You, chef. Yeah, correct. It's exactly that. Ramsey is expediting our food. He is the scariest man in the entire world. His blue eyes sink into your soul, and you've got nothing left when he starts yelling at you. I want the food going out perfectly and on time. Got me? Yes, sir. Good. The restaurant doors will be opening shortly. Let's go, guys. I think you on risotto. OK. okay. You want to do the tuna? Yeah. I will cook the Wagyu, OK? OK. I'm a good communicator. And winning team challenges comes down to communication. All about communicating. All about communicating. Okay. I'm going to take charge of the rice and the mushroom saute. I will sear the Wagyu. I will sear the meat. And then I'm going to do the crostini. Steven is going through the tasks. And the tasks that Claudia and I have are very minimal. I'm going to be working here. I'm going to be accessing this area primarily. I mean, that's just the way he works. But in this challenge, if Steven takes on too much, the team is going to sink real fast. All right. The doors to Chaya Restaurant are now open. Good evening. Yeah, welcome. Please go ahead on in. And its prestigious reputation is now in the hands of six home cooks. You don't have a ton of tuna, OK? You dice them to order, one per order. Let's go, guys. All right, first two orders. Thank you. Right, blue team, two killers, two tuna. Entree, one sea bass, one venison. Heard. Two tuna. Heard. Heard. Red team on order, two covers, table 22, one tuna, one beef, entree, one sea bass, one venison. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, Let's chef. go, yes, guys, chef. please. Yes, chef. Come on, Steven. You got it? How long for that risotto? They're waiting on two. Okay, I got it, yep. I got it. You do the tuna. Three tuna, one risotto. I'm doing the risotto, and I'm doing the beef, and I'm doing the crostini, and I'm starting to realize that I can't do it all. <laughs> Come on. I got one minute on that other risotto. I cannot do this bread and the risotto. I'm sorry. I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. Three tuna, one risotto, follow my two tuna, two risotto. That is it. I've never worked in a more chaotic or confusing environment in my entire life, but my first marriage was close. While Steven's red team struggles to find some kind of balance. Come on, guys, please. Come on, please, Nick. Yes, Jeff. Yes. Expectant diners continue to flood into the restaurant, and Derek's blue team is starting to feel the pressure. Blue team. Yes, Jeff. It is absolutely silent. It's getting full, Chef. Thank you. I've got one risotto in the window going stone cold, Hurry blue up, team. Hethel. And where's the We're tuna? We're waiting on you. I need bread. Hethel just does not get it. That's what I need. I'm waiting okay. on the bread. Coming. What? Then tell us you what you need. you got to tell me when you're low on bread. Oh, my God. There's no timing. And there's no communication. Blue team, speed up. Two risotto on tuna. I am dying now. Yes. Heard. Earth to Hethel. Why aren't you answering me? I'm sorry. I'm... When you have a voice, things happen. We can't just sit there and clam up. Open up! Yes, sir. Yeah. Am I used to people yelling at me? Yes, I grew up in Jersey. Am I used to people like Ramsey yelling at me? No, not really. What are you doing? I need, I, I, yes, yeah. You're crisscrossing over each other. No, this is a mess. I'm trying to help you. OK. You're right. It is a mess. We are in a pressure cooker times thousands. I need, we're behind on risotto. We're behind. I should do more risotto. Embarrassing. The Master Chef Top Six Home Cooks have taken over the world renowned Japanese fusion restaurant, Chaya, in downtown Los Angeles. Blue tea. Yes, Chef. Three tuna, one risotto. I am dying for. I got a beef coming urgently. Chef, may you tell me how many risottos are in the window? Yeah, about 27 I'm waiting on. While Derek and the blue team struggle with the appetizers. I can't get this bread to cook. Hold on. The guests are growing increasingly frustrated. I apologize for the wait. I will go back to the kitchen and check on it because I know it's been a while and you must be hungry. We've been waiting for the blue team's appetizers for about an hour. Getting pretty hungry. Blue team, there's nothing coming out. We got to plate these now. Here, plate it. But I don't have three orders. Yeah, you do. It's in here. What no, I don't have three orders of beef. 
What's going on? Are we backed up? Hey, guys. The dining hey, room hey, is full. Blue team. You three, come here. Come here. Yes, hey. sir. Yes, sir. We're getting there, OK? My apologies. OK. You're not even talking to one another. Yes. You're not even in sync. And the right arm doesn't know what the left arm's doing. And we've got no idea. Yes, and we're sir. falling behind. And customers are getting pissed off. OK. Communicate, please. Regroup right now. Okay, okay. You have two tuna working, okay? As soon as that is going, you need to tell me how long on the next order. Every time, communicate to her. She's got risotto all day. While Derek rallies the blue team, the red team is losing focus on Chaya's world famous dish. Tuna up. Where's my risotto? Are you serious? Hey, red team. Yes, sir. What is wrong with that tuna? It's too mayonnaise. Look too at it. Claudia, you didn't taste it. It's like cat food, drenched in mayonnaise. Yes, this place created tuna tartare, and you just it. Come on! All I know at this point is I just need to not let this shake me. So I'm going to take it upon myself to make sure that we correct these mistakes and that they don't happen again. Two tunas up, three risottos in 30 seconds, chef. Very nice. Service, please. Pick up. Thank you, chef. As Claudia gets the red team back on track, the blue team have finally found their groove and are beginning to get some appetizers out. What do you need? OK, is, your, is that you tuna need? ready? Get that yes, tuna plated. Yes, the tuna's plated. ready. Get I need it plated. six pieces of bread from you. Finally, yes, we got a voice. Yes, chef. We have two tuna ready. Nice. Beautiful. Thank you. Two risotto, table 43, go. Follow me with the beef. Put okay. the beef on there. 30 seconds on beef. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's go. With both teams now starting to catch up, Christina checks in with the guests. How are you finding the red team tuna tartare? I'm really impressed, actually. It's really delicious. It's decadent. Um, I'm very happy with it. I got the red team's Wagyu steak, and it is insanely good. It is literally one of the best things I've ever tasted. So you're enjoying appetizers from the blue team. Fair to say that you're impressed, enjoying everything that you have? Yeah. yeah All right, I love that. Can't wait for more. While customers are full of praise for both teams' appetizers, back in the kitchen, the home cooks move on to the toughest dishes of the night, the entrees. Two sea bass, two venison, two sea bass, two venison, three sea bass, That's one right. venison. Thank you, Derek. Let's go. And while the blue team is off to a flying start. Beautiful. Thank you, chef. Service, please. The red team is unable to grasp the difference in timing between the venison and the sea bass. Three sea bass, one venison. Three sea bass, one venison. Three sea bass, one venison. Yes, sir. Hurts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ramsey keeps barking. Three sea bass, one venison. 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 Three bass, one venison. Three bass, one venison. They're coming up. Come on, Nick. Three sea bass, one venison. I've said it four times. Three sea bass, one venison. Yes, sir. We can't get the sea bass. We can't get the venison. This is taking forever. Red team, how long, please? Uh, we're about maybe uh, Just one, give me a one, time. Two minutes out, chef. I don't want maybe, if be, can I, maybe. Just give me a time. Two minutes, chef. The sea bass takes like four minutes to cook. The venison takes like 12 minutes to cook. The timing on it is critical. And these first few sea bass, I'm just cooking them too much. Ah! Come on, guys. Ah. How long on my sea bass, guys? I have plates getting cold. I know, I know. Three bass, one venison. Yes, chef. It's a four top. Yes, chef. Right now, we might be responsible for Gordon Ramsay's death. He looks like he's going to have a heart attack. Talk to me. But before he goes, he's going to kill the three of us first. All I want is three bass, one venison. Come on. Come on, guys. All I want is three bass, one venison. Yes, yes chef. chef. Entree service is underway at the world-renowned Japanese fusion restaurant, Chaya, in downtown Los Angeles. Venison ready. Thank you. While the blue team is getting entrees out efficiently, the red team is stuck on an order for just one table. Nick, pass me that leaf up. Red team. Yes, sir. It's overcooked and it looks like a dog chew. And look at the board there. There's like half a deer on your board. And you want me to serve the <laughs> Tighten up a little bit and focus. All right. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. While Steven tries to get his red team focused, on the blue team, Katrina is struggling on the fish station. I say we just serve it, then I don't know what to do. What's the matter? This is. Yeah, She's... show me. Show me. Is that, is that... Yeah, that is black. That is burnt. That is black. I'll start anew. Who put that on a plate? I did. This is crazy. Pass me that next one. 
I've been cooking fish since I was a kid. Oh, my God. What the f am I doing? Why are you doing this? I'm Luke. It's like you're sabotaging the team. I'm sorry. Graham, can you help the blue team out, please? Yeah. There's zero room for error at this point because we're in the middle of dinner service and burnt fish, that could sink our ship right now. Yes. Perfect. Flip them. There you go. Great. They're not burning. They look great. Good. Two sea bass ready. Thank you. Finally. I had a blue team's venison. The chestnut puree was fantastic. It was on point. The flavors were all there. Nice to cook that venison, Derek. Thank you, Chef. I ordered the sea bass from the blue team, and it was absolutely amazing. How are you enjoying the red team's sea bass? Honestly? Oh, no. As far as I'm concerned, every component of this dish has a film of oil on it. Red tea. Yes, Chef. Less oil. Thank you. Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. Come on. So, how did the red team do with it's the venison? Delicious. Yes. It's so good. Red team, last table. Let's go, let's go. Right now, Chef. Two sea bass, two, two venison. venison. Five, two, two, please. Red team, turn off, clear down. Off you go. We finished service well before the blue team, but at this point, it's really anyone's game. If our plates didn't deliver and those clients gave bad reviews, we're gonna be in big trouble. While the red team cools down, back on the line, the blue team has fallen behind with their last remaining tables. Coming down, I know. They're about to leave. I know, they're this coming right now. In an hour. Hour. Come on, Derek, get tough. Derek definitely isn't stepping up as a leader. Hurry up, Derek. Get him sliced. No one's trying to take charge at this point. Everyone just kind of has their head down and is working. That's a sea bass at 22 and 43. Come on, guys. Yes, yeah, Chef. Four venison, last table. Let's go. It's coming right now, Christina. Please, please, please. I would rather serve the venison with no garnish and keep them waiting till midnight, because then we'll be going to the breakfast menu. Here you are, Chef. Table 51, sir. Let's go. 51. That's if they're still here. So, where was the communication? At the beginning of entrees, we were, I felt like we were on our way, and then. And then I burnt the fish. And then you I burnt can't more fish. Let one little mistake back you up. Okay. Every kitchen in the country has got mistakes tonight. I'm disappointed in myself. And if we lose, it's my own fault. We burnt some fish, okay? But we didn't send it out. Tonight's challenge will be determined by the judges based on both team performance in the kitchen and the reviews left by the guests. I don't want to go into this pressure test, you guys. I've been in three already. We all worked as hard as we could. That's all we can do. I know. Now we just wait. Yeah. My only worry is that, did we go too fast? Were our plates as pretty as we could have made them? Was the quality of our dishes where we thought it was? And is this service going to get me to the top five? One, two, three, four, five, six. I count six home cooks still standing. You made it through in a professional service, and that's something you should very much be proud of. Listen, despite some pretty big hiccups from both teams, you bounced back and you survived. Now do us a favor. Have a drink <laughs> and relax. We've got some serious thinking to do because it's too close to call, cool and we need to sleep on it. Well done. Thank you, Good night, sir. Good job, guys. Thank you. Come on down, guys. We did our best. We came together. We had a lot of mistakes, which concerns me, but I think we did enough to win. We all agree their communication was poor and that our timing was off, but I know there is hope that our food was just this much better than the red team. Welcome back to the Master Chef Kitchen. Last night was really challenging. For the very first time, you all faced the fire of working in a truly professional kitchen. Red Team, you started somewhat chaotic, but as you calmed down, you started actually cooking better. Blue Team, at the end of service, you froze like deer in the headlights. However, really positive feedback across the board. The winning team, the team that will be catapulted to the top five of the biggest 
cooking competition in the country. Congratulations. The team that will be safe up on the balcony. Congratulations. Red team. Yes. I got my butt kicked last night. Oddly enough, I've never felt more alive. Red team, please head up to the balcony. Thank, Thank you. you. This is a dream that is coming true, and it all starts with stepping up on the balcony, top five. Blue team, you, of course, will be needing these. Bring it on. I'll wear this black apron all the way to the end, because it's pretty rock and roll. I like the black apron, and that's where I send people home. There are three of you standing in front of us and three of us judges up here. And each of you are going to have to make one of our favorite dishes. But not just any type of dish. A dish that's guaranteed to measure any good home cook, and it can also measure any great chef. I'm talking about pasta. Manicotti with a ricotta spinach filling smothered in tomato sauce. A perfect homey dish, but it has so many complex elements to it. Man, I like man I cotty. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not my favorite. Mine has a bit more color. I'm talking about homemade, beautiful squid ink striped farfalle. Ooh. Tossed with a simple fruit de mer sauce. This dish is a masterpiece and it requires a tremendous amount of culinary artistry to do it justice. Two great pasta dishes, but honestly, not your favorite. None of these are my favorite. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Mine's a little bit more, a little bit more daring. A stunning egg yolk ravioli in a delicious sage brown butter sauce. Mm. A single egg yolk nestled in a perfect pasta pocket. To my mind, pasta doesn't get any more challenging than this. Tonight, we want an exact replication of each dish. Three complex, challenging dishes, all to be completed in just one hour. What? What? Wow. All three of you, please, head to your stations. Let me be the first Italian to tell you that making these three pasta dishes perfectly in 60 minutes, it ain't possible. On your stations, you're going to find everything that you need to make us those incredible pasta dishes. When time is called, all three of your dishes have to be down here on the station in front of us. Your 60 minutes starts. Now, let's go. Even for a professional chef tonight, yeah, in our totally. kitchens, you would struggle to do this. Mm -hmm. Let's break down all three dishes. Consider your manicotti. Well, first of all, if you're making three different pastas yep. fresh from scratch, you have to make the pasta first, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. From there, got to make that really delicious spinach ricotta filling. A little sauteed garlic. Bind it together with yes. some ricotta cheese sauce. It's about cooking those tomatoes down yep. deeply and quickly. Uh, Graham, yours is a little bit more difficult. Right, yeah. I make two doughs, and then I'm going to cut into thin little strips and intertwine it onto the regular Smart. pasta, and wow. then roll that through. And then at the same time, you've got to get that fruit de mer going. I mean, that has to go in with the pasta. There's a lot just in that dish alone. The secret of my ravioli tonight is the thinness of the pasta. Because mm -hmm. it has to be thin enough in order to cook that egg yolk just slightly poaching inside. That's donkey, man. So you've really got to press it down. But the danger of pressing it down is that you could burst the egg yolk. Careful, careful, careful. If you burst the egg yolk before you poach that ravioli, game over. That a girl. 33 minutes to go, guys. Right, Derek, how are you feeling? Doing well, Chef. Uh, Doing well. Three technical dishes. How many times have you made pasta at home? A few times. I love making ravioli. Have you ever made egg yolk ravioli before? <laughs> I have not. That, not. Was, that was a new challenge. But it's almost like your second name now, Derek Pressure, because you're always in these pressure tests. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. not having an easy ride in this competition, are you? You know what? At the end of the day, like, this is where you learn. This is where you get That's better. Right. This is where you win. 
One more sure. question. Sure. Quarter million dollars. It's mine. 20 minutes remaining. Ah! Trina, tomato sauce is going, pasta's all made. Yeah. Which one are you most worried about right now? Um, squid. I don't know how to make those little lines. It's very, very complex. But remember, three pasta dishes, they all have their own components. Yeah, I'm gonna bust a move and give it my all. There you go. <laughs> all right, come on. Hethel. Yes. How are you feeling? I have the sauce going. I have the filling for the egg one. Um, Sorry, I are you talking about the manicotti or the egg yolk ravioli? This will be the egg yolk filled pasta. And you saw the egg yolk ravioli that Gordon presented. Yes, it was brown. Um, okay, please just keep your eye on the clock. We're looking for three beautiful dishes. Thank Good luck. You. Wow, okay. this is intense. Katrina's in the zone. I mean, I... Oh, oh. oh. we're okay. <laughs> I think that she is fighting for her life. I don't know if this is right. The thing I'm nervous about with Katrina is she has no clue how to do the striped pasta. But it doesn't look right. <laughs> Mine looks like a cow. <laughs> How's Derek doing? It's feisty. He's got the grip between his teeth, and he's uh, bringing on the pressure. Apple's making her egg yolk ravioli, mm -hmm. but she's made some sort of parsley ricotta filling. What is she doing? I don't so know where her mind was. She's standing right in front of us. Ricotta. I thought we were pretty clear about it. There we go. Last 10 minutes, guys. Ah! Sweating biscuits over here, man. I need an egg wash. Hmm? That's not how theirs was. Was it just an egg? Just an egg? All right. All right, let's just roll this one out. I'm running out of time at this point, and the moment I start cooking with anxiety and fear is when it's just all downhill. My hands aren't moving the way I want them to move. My brain's not thinking the way I want it to think. Bro, you need some sauces, girl. And I'm thinking, just put up two good plates, Ethel. OK, you know what? I'm just going to screw this. I can't do this. You need some sauces, otherwise you're not going to have anything. Apple. How are we doing? I'm not going to get the squid ink pasta in. Okay, I'm not going to get that done. You're not going to get it done? I'm not going to have enough time to do the third pasta dish, so I'm not going to be able to do it at all. I'm watching Hethel. She's working on her squid pasta, and she just gives up. Are you kidding me? Hey, you're in the top six. There's people that would kill for your spot, and you're giving up. Man, you're in trouble, babe. Terrible. Screw this. Okay, I'm not gonna get that done. You're not gonna get it done? I'm not gonna have enough time to do the third pasta dish. Terrible. You can totally get it done. Nine minutes to go. Okay. All right? Pasta's made. Cut yeah. it into rectangles and pinch it, fill in the water. One portion. Okay. Let's go. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I have eight minutes left to this squid pasta. I just need to focus on the food and less on my feelings. Done. Wow, that's all. What is going on with her? I feel like we keep losing the bits and pieces of apple that made us just strong contender. It's a little bitter, but what can you do? Katrina's just talking to herself and seems all over the place. I gotta look for the damn thing. Smart. Don't think she feels confident. Son of a bitch. Okay, that'll be my egg wash. Derek's really feeling the heat. He's gone back to make another egg yolk ravioli. Come on, Rush. He's cut them so small that it's too close to the yolk, so it's just seeping out. They take literally 90 seconds to cook. So if Derek doesn't get this in the water, then he'll be going home. Two and a half minutes to go. Ooh, you got this, Apple. Come on. All three plates have to be down on the front bench. Come on, come on. Ten, nine, no, no, eight, no. seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, stop. Hands in the air. Ah! <laughs> wow. I did the three most difficult pasta dishes in MasterChef history, and I think I nailed it. Now that's what I call a pressure test. Time to taste your pasta dishes and find out whose time has run out here in the MasterChef kitchen. Derek, talk me through the process. I started the pasta first. I made the marinara with red wine, garlic, shallots, chicken stock, and the tomatoes. You have a really nice, thin, even layer of that pasta, so that's a great sign. Um, filling, definitely a little stingy. I could have been more generous with that. 
Pasta is beautiful. You definitely nail that part of the manicotti. The tomato sauce has a good depth of flavor, but I'd say it's also sort of lacking a pinch of salt. Mm -hmm. But all in all, I think you did a pretty great job. Thank you. Katrina, your manicotti definitely looks like it's dinner time. <laughs> it's time to get in there. Let's take a taste. Did you pipe that ricotta spinach filling? Yeah. Got a nice, even round of pasta. I think he kind of nailed it here. <laughs> Have you ever made manicotti? No. It was so much easier to buy it pre-made at the store. Well, I got to be honest, Katrina. Your manicotti is far better than anything <laughs> that you could find at the store. You did a great job of seasoning both the filling as well as the tomato sauce. The flavors are definitely all there. It tastes like a delicious manicotti and red sauce just made with love. I was told by a good friend of mine that if you don't cook Italian food with love, then it's not Italian food. Nick, can I get? Okay, just checking. <laughs> um, I agree, thank you very much for that. Yeah. And Hethel, yes. talk me through your manicotti. <laughs> Um, I kept it really simple and clean. I put it in the oven too long and I didn't fill the ends as much as they should be. Filling looks nice and even, much like Derek, you sort of underfilled the ends, which leads to the sort of dry pieces. Uh -huh. um, let's give it a taste. Your spinach ricotta filling of the manicotti is, is, is fine, needs more seasoning. Mm -hmm. Your tomato sauce is definitely a little lackluster. You, you can tell just visually yeah. before you even bite into it, but nice pasta work for sure. Okay. Thank you. So, this dish is made to taste of the ocean, Yeah. right? Scallops. So, striped, Yeah. right? It is a huge task, so very, very good job. But, what's the biggest thing with pasta? It's gotta be cooked. Yeah. And that you can see, undercooked in the middle. Could have gone longer. The seafood is cooked beautifully, okay, great flavor. The wine's cooked off, juices came out of the clams, the scallops are cooked nice, pasta definitely undercooked, but uh, overall, good job. Thank you. Honest assessment between yours, Derek's, and Hethel's. Um, I'm the bottom, 100%. I didn't understand how to get the lines. Okay. That's a big one. Oh, this one. I know. Appears to be missing something. I know. What is it? The squidding. Yeah, the stripes. Definitely raw pasta in the middle. Yeah. It's not just the pasta, it's everything else that goes with it. Gorgeous. Thank you. Refinement needed. Yes. The pasta itself, undercooked, and you need to learn that technique of, of getting the stripes. But the cook on these scallops and the clams, beautiful. Couldn't ask for better. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, Hethel, I mean, you considered nine minutes left not even doing this dish. The thing is, the pasta itself, better looking than anybody else's. Beautiful stripes going through. Scallops, whiter than the bowl they're in. They look like ceviche. Oh it's my awesome. god. Raw wine, unseared scallops, undercooked clams. And once again, I keep screwing up. You definitely did screw that one up. Okay, next up, the egg yolk ravioli. <laughs> Derek, I could scream right now because you could quite possibly be going home based on one thing. Look at the dish. And you, young man, tell me. You could quite possibly be going home based on one thing. Raw sage. Eat that. You're right. Now, I want you to taste it, though. How disgusting is that? I'm so sorry.
It's like eating an air freshener. It's just so pungent and so vile. It needs to be cooked. Visually, the secret of this ravioli tonight needs to be transparent because you're literally poaching that ravioli for 90 seconds and the yolk should run out. The pasta's cooked beautifully, it's al dente. The yolk, it's like velvet, silk, brown butter. It's flavoursome. But at this stage of the game, it's more about what you don't put on as opposed to what you put on. <sighs> Visually, ravioli looks beautiful. What's inside the ravioli? There is a tiny dab of ricotta. Oh, no. Because no. Yeah, no. No. And then an egg yolk. No, stop. What's the ricotta for? How is it work? No, manicotti. OK. How can you get that silky, smooth, velvet richness of the yolk with grains of ricotta in there? I'm sorry. Beautiful. Thank you. A near perfect egg ravioli, but spoiled by a dab of ricotta. Oh, dear. So the ravioli's full of air. What does that mean? It means I didn't seal it properly with my thumb and fingers. No, worse than that. Water seeps through, destroys the texture. How long do you cook it for? About a minute and a half. That's not 90 second cook. Is that that is. Too much? Yeah, well, if you can see, the egg yolk has coagulated at the. Oh my God, what's all that black? That's the pepper. Oh my God. How much pepper did you use in that? I thought I'd just put a pinch. You thought? Yeah. Look at the blackness of it. That is embarrassing. I am embarrassed. I can't believe she I'm pretty much like, Hethel, don't cry. It's not the end of the world. But it will make fundamental mistakes. Because the mistakes that Derek and Katrina made were far worse than mine. That was a tough challenge tonight. Let's get that right. All three of you made some silly mistakes. Derek, you now two out of three past the dishes. One spoilt with a disgusting raw sage leaf on top. Yes, I royally messed up my ravioli. I spaced out and put a raw sage leaf on top of a perfectly cooked piece of pasta. Can we look past that, please? Katrina, two dishes that you excelled in, one dish you underachieved in my crazy squid pasta. It was a train wreck, but I'm saying to myself, I'm not going home. Wisconsin is not seeing me tonight. Hethel, tonight, young lady, you really seriously felt pressure. I'm afraid, out of all three pasta dishes, you didn't really shine on any of them. None whatsoever. And that is why your MasterChef journey ends here. Derek, Katrina, Say goodbye to Hethel and head upstairs to the balcony. Pleasure working with you. Keep chin. It's okay. Don't cry, it's okay. Oh, Hethel. You have been an amazing start. You are going to go down in history in this competition <laughs> as my favourite vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Come and say goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Well, Thank you. Amazing. Great job. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> One more question you have to answer. <laughs> Who is America's next master chef? Katrina. <laughs> 100% Katrina. What? She cooks with heart, she cooks with love, and I just think she's a wonderful person. Thanks. Thank you, my darling. Please, put your apron on your bench. Thank, Thank you, my darling.
Leaving MasterChef, I'm leaving humbled, grateful, confident, but I'm just so, so really proud of myself that I made it this far. As a vegetarian, I beat out thousands of meat eaters and got to the top six. That's insane. Congratulations, Heather. <laughs> You know, I cooked with meat like it was nothing. I didn't, you know, okay, maybe I did freak out a few times. Ew, stop moving! Ooh. Oh, God. But, you know, I, I held my own. It's delicious. <laughs> Honestly, time for me to retire. Um, you've nailed it. You keep putting food up like this and screw the top ten. I mean, you'll be in, like, the top two. Thank you so much. Red team. Yes! been a once-in-a-lifetime experience for sure. There we go. Hurry up, hurry up, please! So extreme, but so worth it. So, so worth it. Ready? <laughs> Next time. Please, welcome back Luca, Courtney, and Christine Ah. Three former champions. Ah! Take the competition to a new level. Cook as hard as you ever did in your life. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Come on, Nick. Go, go. Pushing the top five. You have to know how to tone down. Ah. Beyond their culinary Three. limits. Come on, guys. Two. Someone's going down One. in a big ball of fire. Ah. One potato, two potato.